On this episode of Cycle Talk, we hit the highways on Harley Davidson's Road King. We go bush on the 1290 at Super Adventure from KDM. We jump on an ATV from Yamaha, the Grizzly 700. But let's kick it all off with the Ducati Scrambler. This is the Ducati Scrambler that everyone's been waiting for. I mean, check it out. Look how slim and sleek it is. Chrome inlay on the tank, 350cc single cylinder, big Amal carburetor, a ground shaking 29 horsepower, drum brakes front and rear. What more could you want? Oh, sorry, you thought I meant that gorgeous 1972 model Ducati Scrambler. No, no, no. This is the Ducati Scrambler everyone's been waiting for in 2015. It's still slim, it's still sleek, but instead of a single cylinder, it's got an 800cc V-twin engine. Ducati is one of those manufacturers that knows the power of the past. Much of its success in this current day goes back to those 60s and 70s and 80s when it built its name. And the Ducati Scrambler was one of those bikes. In the late 60s, early 70s, it was a bike for cool, hip young people. And that's why this bike exists now. Not because the older people of Ducati wanted to build something for the current cool and hip people. No, no, no. It was a Ducati group of designers that were cool and hip themselves. And they wanted to replicate the old Ducati Scrambler into the new one, and that's why this bike exists as it is. You know, Ducati makes plenty of pretty highly technically advanced motorcycles, but this bike's not one of them, and it's not what this bike is about. The engine is air-cooled, it comes from the 796 Monster 803cc, but it's not even as advanced as that engine from the Monster. What they've done, they've converted it to a single throttle body instead of two, They've remapped the engine so that it's better down low and it's got no real technical aids other than ABS, there's no traction control. It's as pretty simple as a modern Ducati gets really. And, and I think because of that, it'll be a very successful motorcycle. I first rode this bike late last year at the world launch in America and came away really impressed. I like the fact that the bike is so easy to ride. It, it looks cool and Talking to the designers there at the time, they were saying they wanted a bike to be great at everyday motorcycling, be a lot of fun. And as a result, they designed the suspension to be, or to have more travel than a sports bike, but less an enduro bike. And it's sort of pretty much there, 150 millimeters of travel either, either end. So it does soak up the bumps reasonably well. Handles very nice, despite the fact that the tires look like they're road racing wets. They're very chunky, they give a lot of grip, and I found it to be a really easy machine to get on with. Now, adventurous riders would be easily capable of taking this bike off-road to a degree. It's not really what it's about though. I think it's about a long, windy country road, bumpy roads, dirt roads, does it all day long, and it's great fun doing it but it's also at home just cruising down to the cafe or down the beach, perfect. Now there's four Scrambler models. This is the Icon. Ducati also makes the Classic, the Full Throttle and the Urban Enduro. And essentially what they are is just a styling take. You know, there's different style inlays on the tank. There's different exhaust setups, different seat color, different bars and so on, and even different wheels. But for me, what I like about the fact is, is that Ducati's designers have made the four bikes so that they're basically interchangeable. They want you, the buyer, to chop and change parts. So you can take the front guard off an urban enduro and put it on an icon, if you so wish. Really, the aim is, or, or, the, or the idea is, just do what you want to do with it. And the accessory range not only just goes for the bike, there's loads of clothing, helmets, leather jackets, soft jackets, you name it, you can really get right into that Scrambler lifestyle. The Ducati Scrambler is just starting to arrive in Australia and they're priced from $12,995. Now 
Now you can't really compare the modern Scrambler with this 1972 model, but the design ethos is pretty much the same. It's all about hip, cool, slim, sleek, all that sort of stuff. I think in this current day, a bike like this, which is not original, it's tastefully modified though. I think it's got a beautiful single up sweat pipe, nice paint job, and it's cool as. There's something about the style and class that came with the old American iron that has resonated with thousands of motorcyclists over the years. And Harley Davidson represents that these days in its big bagger slash tourer, the Road King. So the Road King comes with a detachable screen. You can take that off in seconds and turn it from a touring bike into a bagger. But interestingly, the bags come off pretty easily too. There's just a couple of fasteners inside that can be popped off without tools, and you can carry the bags into your motel, your hotel, whatever. And it makes it a very versatile bike. You can turn it from a cruiser into a tourer in a matter of moments. And it's big, it's comfortable, it's heavy. And we've got it here on Cycle Talk today. So this is one of Harley Davidson's Rushmore models. It's the last of the Rushmores for Cycle Talk TV to, to get and it was sort of worth the wait. It's just so different to the others. Now, as part of the Rushmore development of the Road King, they've put on much bigger, fatter forks. They're now up to 49 millimetres, and they've changed the damping rates as well. The rear suspension is air adjustable, uh, and there's a, an, a valve just between the, one of the saddlebags and the bike so that you can adjust that quickly and easily if you're adding a load and or a passenger. The suspension and the, the way they've built the chassis means this bike handles much better than, than bikes of this design and shape did years gone by. Sure, it's still big and heavy, it's got the floorboards, but I've been out for it on, for most of the day today and I haven't even scraped the, pair, scraped the footboards yet, which is really, really surprising. So, quite good corner and clearance. Now, it uses a high output 103 engine, the 103 cubic inch engine, so it's a pretty big motor puts out a reasonable amount of power and torque, and it's plenty for a motorcycle of this style and design. It really is. At that speeds of that you generally want to do on a bike like this, 80k zones up to the freeway of 110, there's still quite a bit of grunt to go round traffic, to you know do what you need to do, um, have plenty of power to carry a passenger, all that luggage, keep up with all your mates, and get around the slow caravans and trucks whenever you need to. There's a few mod cons on the Road King. Its cruise control is standard. It's got lots of outputs in the single big dial on the dash, which is the uh, speedo, but inside that you've got options to see your gear position, your revs, distance till empty, multiple trip meters, total odometer reading, things like that, clock, it's all there. The grips have, uh, and the switch blocks, are pre-wired for other accessories. So if you want to add a few other bits and pieces, maybe heated grips, things like that, the wiring's already there to, to plug that in. Your Harley dealer can do that quite easily and quickly. There's ABS as standard. The new electronically reflex linked brakes are part of this Harley Davidson package. The white wall Dunlop tires are pretty trick and they feel pretty good. And they look fantastic. And again, it comes back to building a modern motorcycle with a classic style. Harley Davidson have done that with the Road King. It's really good on the open road. It's surprisingly capable in the city. And if you're looking for a bike where you want a whole dose of style, you want it to be useful in the winter and the summer by being able to take the screen off and get rid of that when you don't want it, the Road King's definitely worth checking out at your Harley dealer. A Road King will set you back $32,495 right away from your Harley dealer. You can get it in six different colour schemes, three of them are two-tone, and it's very well equipped. You don't really need to spend a lot of money on other accessories, but if you want to make it personalised, of course Harley Davidson can help you there as well. Stop dreaming and
and start riding. Your motorcycle adventures start at ProCycles. Graduate to a BMW for pure riding pleasure. Ride a Triumph with classic heritage styling. Add some KTM excitement on the road or dirt. Compare Suzuki's huge range in-store. And when it comes to ProCycles service centres, they've been doing it right for 40 years. First time or next time, make it happen at ProCycles. Hornsby on Sydney's north side and St Peter's in the south. We're Victory Motorcycles. We could use the next 30 seconds to talk about the Victory Freedom 106 V-Twin engine and the bold, modern styling. But we know that what you really care about is how it feels to ride. Victory Motorcycles. Ride one, and you'll own one. You can win an awesome Contour Rome 3 action camera with Cycle Talk and Contour. Just go to cycletalk.com.au slash contour to enter and sign up for the Cycle Talk email newsletter while you're there. The Contour cameras will be one every week. This week we're going to ride KDM's biggest but not so baddest adventure machine, the 1290 Super Adventure. Now, all of KDM's four adventure bikes basically share the same underpinnings, as in big capacity V-twin motor and tubular steel trellis frame. So what makes this bike, the 1290 Super Adventure, so super? So what makes this so super? Well, for a start, it's a 1290cc V-twin engine. It's got 160 horsepower. It's a retuned unit taken from the 1290 Super Duke R naked bike, which has 180 horsepower. Way over the top for a bike, but like this, even a bike so capable of doing big distances to up full luggage. And this bike even has 15,000 kilometre engine service intervals. Yep, just like a modern car does. But let's compare the 1290 Super Adventure to the 1050 Adventure we tested last week. Both are aimed at the touring rider, but this bike, the 1290, is more aimed at the rider who wants the best of everything and is prepared to pay for it. You can tell this bike too is aimed at a big deal at rider comfort, rider and career comfort. And the leather look seats are a perfect example of that. Now, the rider seat has two positions, 860 and 875 millimetres high, and both seats are heated. And even the pillion can adjust their seat to their desired temperature range. This bike's very well equipped as standard. I'll go through a few of the, uh, the items that it's got. Hopefully, I don't forget them. Now, it's got the adjustable screen, heated hand grips, cruise control, traction control, ABS, adjustable riding position, heated seats, it's got tyre pressure monitor, 30 litre fuel tank, it's got LED running lights, it's got centre stand standard, crash bar, rear rack and penny amounts as well. Realistically, there's not a lot that you could buy for this bike that it doesn't already have. And what about that 30 litre fuel tank? <laughs> That's massive. That gives a bike a range of over 500 kilometres. And with the riding position and the comfort level that this bike has, you can easily do that 500 k's without stopping, basically. It's also got the motor slip regulation. Now, what that does is if you suddenly decelerate, say the conditions are a bit dodgy, it, and it stops the bike or the rear wheel from braking traction by increasing the rev slot. And once again, another handy safety feature. Now, like all KDM adventure bikes, this one's got all the different riding modes, but it's a bit different because it's got the WP semi-active suspension. So each riding mode combines with the suspension to give you a different feel. You want to go sportier? Well, that's how the suspension will react. You want to go softer? Well, vice versa, it does the same. Now, it's easy to scroll through into each different riding mode and you can easily adjust the suspension as well, separately. So you can select comfort, sport or whatever. And it's easy enough to do just with the left hand switch block and scrolling through, pretty simple. This bike is designed to do big miles over rough terrain. It's designed for comfort as well, whether it be solo or two up. And it has a lot of the safety and technical features that you expect from a high end motorcycle. It also has an edgier feel to it than most other big bore, Adventure Tourers, and that's down to that engine. KDM's 
V-Twin has never lost that edgy feel that a lot of people like. I like it too. I really like the retuning that KDM has done with this engine, bringing it from the Super Duke R. Dare I say it, it makes it easier to ride. Now, it's got a very tall top gear, almost an overdrive if you like, and this really suits the direction that KDM has taken with this bike. So, it loves the open road. Dirt, tar, doesn't matter. This thing just will eat the miles up all day long. The bike comes with a 19 inch and 17 inch wheel combination. You can see their spoke wheels and I think that gives the game away a little bit from what KDM is thinking of the sort of riding people will do with this bike. It's not the most aggressive bike in KDM's adventure range. That mantle goes to the 1190 Adventure R. But I think this bike is the perfect, dare I say, off-road gentleman's tourer. It's for those people who want to get out in the open and camp under the stars instead of going five star. The KDM 1290 Super Adventure will set you back $26,990 plus on-road costs. Everyone puts their pants on one leg at a time. What separates some of us though is what we throw a leg over after our pants are on. The new Harley Davidson Breakout Motorcycle. Breakout. Cycle Talk's next series will be shown in the spring and it's going to feature my tour of the USA that I'm doing in June. Now to make a really good tour, it's best to have local knowledge. So I'd like your experience, your ideas, and any contacts and friends that you might have in the cities I'm going to, to help me make a great story for Cycle Talk on TV and in the magazine. I'll be starting my tour in Milwaukee at the home of Harley Davidson. Then it's on to Chicago for check out the Gangster Museums. Then it's on to the Motor City, Detroit. And here's a place where they built all those wonderful American cars of days gone by. From the Rust Belt, I'll be heading up into Canada and across to the Niagara Falls where we'll pass back into the USA. Then it's on to Rochester, the home of the former giant of the film and photography industry, Kodak. And I really want to get to the Kodak Museum. From there, I'll be pointing the Big Harley South, heading to New York, the Big Apple. Been there once before. It's an interesting place, and I'm really keen to get back and have another look. While I'm on the road in the USA, I'll be posting pictures to Instagram. I'll be updating our Facebook page, and I might even be getting onto Twitter when I can. So you'll be able to keep up to date with where I'm at and what I'm doing. So if you've got some friends in the USA, I'd love to get in touch with them. They might end up in an Australian magazine or on an Australian TV show which I think will be really, really cool. So email usa at cycletalk.com.au or post something onto our Facebook page and let us know where you think I should go, what you think I should see and who you think I should meet. And I reckon with a bit of help, we'll be able to make a really, really interesting trip through the USA. This week's lucky winner is Stephen Fitzjohn. You've still got a chance to win a Contour Rome 3 action camera and the winner will be announced in the June issue of Cycle Talk magazine. This is Yamaha's MT-09 Tracer. Now it's a great touring bike straight out of the box. However, Yamaha do make a whole range of accessories to make it even better. So we're gonna show you some of those today. And the first one is the comfort seat. So here's a, a new seat with different types of covering, different foam inside, dual layer, and it comes with, a, with both the rider and the pillion passenger set. It's got the Tracer logo embossed into the pillion seat. Extra comfortable, and it's uh, $401. If you'd like to increase the luggage capacity of your Tracer, you can get the Yamaha tank bag. Now this touring tank bag goes from 16 to 22 litres expandable. It's got map pockets, side pockets, and the innovative quick lock system. So when you've got the ring mounted on the top of your, your tank, it clips on and clicks off really quickly and easily. When it's off the bike, there's a hand strap at the front and it also comes with a shoulder strap. If you want to put a top box on a tracer or just carry a bit more luggage by having a rear carrier rack, Yamaha's offering this one. It's only $216 and it fits in really, really beautifully on the bike when it's full fitted up. It comes with all the fitting bits that you need and just slides in here and adds to the style of the bike, really looks good and gives you that extra carrying capacity. The Tracer's a fairly tall motorcycle. 
out of, the, out of the box, Yamaha offers a lower seat option. Now, if you still want to go even further than that, you can get the rear suspension lowering linkage, which adjusts the rear suspension height, drops it by 15 millimetres, gives you better ground access to your feet, replaces the original linkage pretty easily, and it's $97. There's also a 12 volt accessory power socket available. Goes into the right hand side of the dash and you can use it to keep your phone charged or your GPS and it's priced at under $50. Now this is a really handy little bracket. Um, it's designed to bolt onto basically any motorcycle GPS unit and it sits just above the handlebars here. You take these clamps off, bolt it in here, your GPS unit sits just below your speedo line of sight. So very, very handy if you want to have a GPS unit on your machine. If you get a bit adventurous on the uh, Tracer, you might want to consider one of these aluminium alloy side stand extenders. Extends the side stand, makes the bike stand up a little bit more vertical, which is really convenient a lot of, a lot of the time. But more importantly, on any soft surface, um, it won't dig in anywhere near as much because it's a much bigger footprint. For just $242, you can make your bike a lot more comfortable by adding this tall screen to the Tracer. It's got the Tracer name on it, but also it's bigger in every dimension than the standard screen. As you can see, it's taller, broader, and gives you a lot more weather protection. Something that I'd be adding straight away uh, for any winter sort of tour on a Tracer. If your love of the green machines is such that you want to show off to your mates how much you like Kawasaki, check out their range of accessories at your Kawasaki dealer. I'm gonna show a few of them to you today. This is the Youth Backpack, LKI brand Kawasaki screen printed backpack. It's designed as a school bag, so you can definitely get some credibility from the schoolmates by having one of these. Out the front, there's plenty of room for pens and pencils and notebooks and things. The main pocket's decent size, holds 17 litres, and there's even a computer pocket in there as well. This is the LKI Team Kawasaki Adult Backpack, 28 litre capacity. There's pockets all over this. It's designed for carrying all the stuff that you need. So down the side here, the back, there's a padded laptop spot. You can slide your laptop straight in there. There's a smaller pocket up the top for media, for bits and pieces. There's pockets down the side. There's mesh pockets. You can just put lightweight things in or drink bottles. There's main pocket in the front, this one here has got spots for pens, notebooks, plus your main carrying capacity. And then there's even still another pocket up the front to get to that can hold more bits and pieces and has zippered pockets and even, even a phone pocket, calculator, whatever you like, in the front there. So this one, it's bigger, it's got great straps on the front, hooks on the straps. There's even a pocket at the front here, you might be able to squeeze a mobile phone in and that's available at your Kawasaki dealer. Now the other thing is this Kawasaki shirt I'm wearing. It's part of the Kawasaki race team apparel. There's a whole range of polos and t-shirts and these sort of shirts. Heaps and heaps of different bits and pieces to show your love of Kawasaki. Check them all out at your Kawasaki dealer. take a look at Yamaha's YFM 700 Grizzly ATV. This is Yamaha's top of the line machine and it is a true all-terrain vehicle. 
I went to the launch six or eight months ago and I was really impressed. A lot of manufacturers, they tout a new design or a new feature, but it's difficult to live up to expectations. Well, the Grizzly really delivered. But let's start with the power plant. The Grizzly is powered by a 686cc single cylinder engine. It's liquid cooled and fuel injected, similar to what you would find in the Viking side by side. And not only have Yamaha made this engine more powerful, but with the introduction of a 35 degree cylinder head, you also get more ground clearance. This lowers the seat height. The engine itself provides plenty of power on tap, and there's heaps of torque available at the push of a thumb. It may not outright be the most powerful ATV that I've ridden, but it certainly makes up for it with consistency of power delivery and smoothness of transmission. Most high-tech ATVs offer electronic power steering these days, and the all-new Grizzly unit provides variable damping depending on how you ride it. At higher speeds, there's more stability, and at lower speeds or in four-wheel drive, the unit backs off so you can manoeuvre better. Now, firstly, I have to say that I was very impressed with the electronic power steering. It has to be one of the most advanced units that I've ridden. It offers really easy handling at low speeds or in four-wheel drive, but when you open the throttle, you can really feel the resistance pick up. A complete overhaul of the ECU has been designed to provide consistent power output at different altitudes and temperatures. Now, I found the transmission really easy to use. It's a simple high and low range operation with four wheel drive and diff lock available at the push of a button. Handling wise, the changes that Yamaha have made have been really noticeable. I was at the launch of this ATV last year in Port Macquarie where the terrain was a lot more rugged and harsh and I've got to say the performance is just amazing. The suspension's been well selected with what I feel is the right amount of compression and rebound dampening front and rear. Overall you're dealing with a vehicle that weighs about 300 kilograms and has about 200 mils of suspension travel so you're in for a pretty smooth ride. I think Yamaha have made some really good choices with these updates and it redefines what we think of as an all-rounder. One thing's for sure, I'd love to have a Grizzly in the shed. We tested the standard version of the YFM700 FAP Grizzly and it's priced at $12,999. You can also get a silver special edition for $13,499 or a blue limited edition for $13,499. Check your Yamaha dealer for details.